Hey everybody, Jem Schofield of C47, and today I'm in Westcott Studios, and we're going to talk about green screen for video production and filmmaking. So behind me, we have a few different options in terms of chroma key solutions from Westcott. Over my left shoulder, we have the collapsible 6x7, and that is actually a blue and a green screen, all in one. Behind me, directly behind me, we have a wrinkle resistant 9x10, also comes in a 9x20. And then over my right shoulder, we have the 5x7 X drop, also wrinkle resistant. And one of the reasons that I really love this system is it packs down into this bag here, teeny tiny, for the entire system. And it has the whole system to basically attach that background and it also allows you to add different backdrops so I can put white on there I can put black I can put gray uh, if it's just a neutral gray then you can go ahead and gel it great for video production applications just buy a few different backgrounds with this and you can use it for lots and lots of stuff but this video is all about chroma keying so before we get into sort of our approach for this in terms of lighting and everything, I do want to talk to you about the difference between using blue or green for your chroma key applications. All right, so the question is blue or green? And it's a pretty easy question to answer right now, especially because of the way most modern digital cameras capture images. And what they do in most situations is capture or sample more green than they do blue. So we like to usually use green. Now there are exceptions to that. For instance, let's say you were shooting something that was cosplay or superhero related and people were wearing a lot of green. Then obviously you would go with blue in that type of situation. Also, when somebody has really fair or light hair, let's say somebody who's blonde, then generally you can pull a cleaner key with blue rather than green. But because cameras are generally sampling more green than blue, when you do shoot with blue, you may see a little bit more noise. And then it's even more important in those situations to shoot at low ISOs and to make sure you're shooting at the highest bit rate that you can in the camera system, the highest bit depth, and that you get the most color sampling. So 420, it's OK. If your camera can do 422, do that. 8-bit is OK. If your camera can do 10-bit, do that. So higher bit rate means you can allocate more information to that color information, your luminance, everything else. Go with that. So now that we've talked about that, the blue versus green, we're going to go out and shoot a backplate for our green screen shoot. OK, so we're out in Westcott's warehouse space. And we want to talk a little bit about motivation in terms of why we would do a green screen shoot besides for special effects stuff. I'm going to introduce you to Josh. How's it going, Josh? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Josh actually has worked with me on some stuff in terms of education. And what's sort of our scenario here? We're out in a noisy workspace yep. out in the warehouse. Um, it's hard to get clean audio. Yep. So we are going to film out here yep. and then go back in the studio, set up the same shot, and use the green screen to create a seamless um, video. Composite, put them together. And that's our motivation. So it's not really for special effects. It's because we're trying to solve a problem. This space is really noisy. We have one, two, three open bays. They need to stay open. Uh, we have a lot of stuff happening in terms of people working out in the warehouse. A lot of noise happens here. So we made the decision that we wanted to do this interview. We wanted to put Josh in the environment that he works in, but we also want to make sure that we get clean audio, which is incredibly important. So uh, let me just kind of run through some of the things that we did. Of course, the first thing we had to do is we had to find our frame. So we're here uh, on this particular camera shooting in ultra high definition. We have a relatively wide frame here so we can see a bunch of the warehouse. And I'm actually going to have Josh go ahead and stand on a mark that we created. Not that we're going to do the interview here, but the idea is that Josh is speaking camera right to basically this interview. We're going to match this up when we shoot the green screen stuff. And 
So we've marked that just so again we can kind of get our frame. It's always important when you're shooting your own back plates to bring a tape measure. So we have a tape measure here. We've measured camera height, which is about four and a half feet off the ground. And we've also measured in terms of from the center plane to our talent, which is about six feet. So again, things that we need to remember, write down and actually match when we get back into the studio. Looking camera right, about six feet away from the camera. And then we also have to look at and have an idea of what our light source is. We've got this big open bay right over here. And that's basically our key source in this space. So we've got this key here and we're gonna have to replicate this key light in the studio space and that's really important. And that's really what we have to do when we do this. So what will happen is I'm actually gonna ask Josh if you can clear the frame right now. Um, he's gonna now clear the frame. We're gonna get this clean plate here. And by the way, we also, it's generally a good idea to go ahead and focus on the talents basically space when you're doing this because we know that we're going to replicate this in post so we've actually even focused on Josh's basically space here or his mark and if we want to it's easy because we're shooting an ultra high def to go ahead and move that back plate around because we're going to finish in 1080. We can also blur that background to create shallower depth of field in post if we need to. That's all stuff that we can do later on. So let's get into the studio now after we shoot this back plate. We're just going to go ahead and hit record on the camera to do that. And let's go ahead and light our green screen and put this all together. So we've shot our back plate. We're going to get Josh in here in about 10 minutes. But what I want to do is talk to you about how we lit the green screen. And this is not a new concept. I mean, this is pretty much the way you do it. A lot of it has to do with distance. It's about cross keying light. So let's just break down what's behind me very quickly. So for the 9 by 10, the 6 by 7 collapsible, or even the X drop, I think these lights are fantastic. This is the one by two bicolor flex light. It's on Scrim Jim Cine. I actually have the portable soft boxes attached to them with diffusion. So it just diffuses the light a little bit more. And we are cross keying them. In this situation, they are at between, I think they're at about 40 or 50% of their power to light this. They are about six feet away from the green screen itself and we're just cross keying them and making sure that that light is as even as possible. Also, of course, pulling your green screen taut is good because you don't want wrinkles. Wrinkles create problems. Keyers are so good now that really one of the most important things that you want to do because they are so good is you want to make sure you don't over light. It's even light. It's making sure it reads as green, but don't over light it. And from that standpoint, I'm just going to actually walk over to this monitor here. I have a uh, waveform monitor that's up here, and this allows me to judge exposure. You could, of course, use, yeah, let's go ahead and drop that just for a second, the key light. Um, we could use a light meter and make sure that we're within, you know, two or three tenths of a stop. But really, generally, when I'm lighting a green screen, depending on the distance from the green screen and the subject, I'm usually lighting it between about 40 to 50 on a waveform monitor. You can do the same type of thing if you're using a histogram. There are apps that are out there that help you light things. And there are also some other cool tools, like for instance, on this particular monitor from Small HD, they have an exposure assist feature which will actually show you color and you want to make sure that that's as even as possible over the entire screen and then you have pretty much the same exposure overall. So great tools that you can use to help you light that green screen evenly. Let's go ahead and bring that key light back up. Um, and just a couple of other tips. We've actually set some fast flags. I have another one to raise over there. And what that's also doing is making sure, even though the softbox is doing some of the work, it's minimizing how much spill is going to be coming back uh, from the actual light source itself so that we can then light with our own key. We can go ahead and have our own edge or hair light. And that's what we need to do next. So it's now time to bring Josh in here, show you how we're going to light this to match the back plate. And let's go. So green screen lit. Now Josh is here. And we're going to do the actual interview in a quiet space, good audio, all of that stuff. 
So what we wanted to do from a lighting standpoint for Josh was make sure that we were replicating as much as possible at least where that key source was coming from. And if you remember from that segment, we talked about that bay door being open. We were basically getting that key light coming from this direction. So what we've done is set up a DP kit. This is a four by four frame with one stop diffusion. We're pushing a one by two through that frame right now. And everything for this particular shoot is all daylight balance. So we're making all of our lights read at 55, 5600 Kelvin. Um, we've also set up another DP kit here with the floppy cutter. And while that key source and sort of the warehouse was relatively flat or at least more sort of high key, even though it's kind of soft boxy coming through that bay window, we wanted to create a little bit more contrast here and that's what that negative fill is doing. It's just allowing us to have a little bit of contrast. And then above and behind Josh, we actually have an ice light two set up and that's creating and replicating the lights that we saw in the space. So there's a little bit of an edge there and we would normally do this in green screen anyway. And the other thing that I've done is I've taken a quarter minus green, which is really a magenta gel, and I've put that in front of that ice light too. And that can also help minimize the green spill that you're getting when you're shooting green screen. You don't always have to do it, and sometimes people overdo it, so then you start to see magenta. But just that little quarter minus green can help out a lot. So that's really the setup. Um, ice light two for separation, floppy, we get a little negative fill. We got a four by four frame here to replicate that bay window. It's now my job to get in that position next to camera where Josh is looking camera right, like we had framed up for the back plate. I'm gonna go ahead and interview him. Uh, distance again, about six feet like it was and the way we thought we were gonna do it from there. And the only other thing I'll say is that sometimes when you're shooting and your green screen isn't huge and you'll see in our master shot, that we see a lot of the rest of the room, you just have to make sure to either get a larger green screen or you have to go ahead and direct your talent to not move their hands outside of the green screen area or move outside of it because of course you won't be able to key that. So let me go ahead and get in that position. Josh, it's time for me to ask you about what you do here. We'll talk about that and there you have it. So Josh, tell me what it is that you do here at Westcott. My name's Josh, and I'm the Product Quality Inspector at FJ Westcott, and I make sure that all products going out the door meet or exceed the customer's expectations. Okay, so that's a wrap on production. Of course, what we would now do is bring this footage into post-production, and as you just saw in the previous clip, we've taken that back plate that we shot in the warehouse, we've taken the green screen footage with Josh, and we've actually composited them together. Now you can do that in Final Cut Pro 10, Premiere Pro, you can do it in After Effects. There's a number of built-in keyers to those applications, but also third-party ones that you can add to them. And the basic process is first pulling the key. So you've got to sample that green and get rid of that. Then you've got to go ahead and bring your backplate in and do that, position your talent to where you want them to be. And then it's the finesse stuff. Like for instance, we have all of this extra stuff in the frame in Josh's interview. We use a mat, usually commonly referred to as a garbage mat to get rid of the garbage. And then we can also see the back plate there. And also adding other little touches like de-spilling and also things like light wrap. And a lot of keyers now will allow you to essentially sample the luminance values that are coming from your backplate and wrap those around the subject so it feels like they are more inside of that environment that you shot for the backplate. So all really, really cool stuff and hopefully those tips will help you if you're new to green screen for video production or filmmaking so that you can light and get better keys and also shoot good backplates for your projects. Thanks for watching. Thank you.